Hello again. A student came into my office a couple of days ago with a question about the kinematics of pulleys. And I thought that would make a pretty good YouTube video, so here we go. What I'd like to do is I'd like to draw out a real simple system where we're lifting a weight with a rope and some pulleys and draw or derive a relationship between how fast you're pulling the end of the rope and how fast the weight is going up. So let's do this. Let's Let's assume I've got a system that looks like this, and uh, there's a weight, and there's the end of the rope. The end of the rope we'll call point A, all right, and this point here we'll call point B, okay, and it's pretty obvious. Let me let me draw where these pulleys are hooked on. Not the best drawing in the world, but I think it gets the job done. All right, if we're pulling the end of the rope that way, well, how fast is this weight going up? That's a good thing to know. So let's say VA equals 2 meters per second. Well, how fast is VB? What, what's, the, what's the number for VB? And we're looking at, and when we're doing things like this, we're usually interested in whether there's a mechanical advantage or not. If the weight is going up at less than two meters a second, it means I've got a mechanical advantage. It really means that I don't have to pull with, with W, I can pull with some fraction of W, i.e. I can lift uh, more than the tension on the rope. That's a mechanical advantage. Alrighty. So what we're going to do here, the, the, the overall strategy, is I'm going to uh, write an expression for the length of the rope. And I'm going to write it in terms of the length of a bunch of segments. I'm just going to add them up. So let's do this here. I'm going to call this length right here S A. S is, uh, when you talk about lengths, you, S is a very common uh, variable to use. So I'm going to use S here. And I'm going to make one little change there. There's S B. And notice, I only, I'm only. Uh, going between the pulleys here. This distance I'm going to call H, and I'll tell you why here in a second. Now, I've almost got the length of the, uh, the ropes all specified. The one last thing here is there's the, the length of the rope as it goes over the pulley, and I know that's the radius of the pulley and pi and some other stuff, but for right now I'm going to call that SP, and assume the pulleys are all the same size, I'll call that SP. Now that's going to be half of SP, because although this goes all the way around the pulley. That's, that's a half a circumference. That's only a quarter of a circumference there. So that's going to be SP over 2. Now the length of the rope, L, okay, out of whatever L is, L is the distance from there all the way down and around all the way to there. That's the total length of the rope. It's going to be SA right, plus 1, 2, 3 times SB okay, plus H, that length, plus one, two and a half SP. All right, so there we go. So far we've got the length of the rope written in terms of all the different lengths we've got, uh, these, these different segments here. Now, what I'm going to do is take a time derivative of this because what I'm really interested in is I'm trying to figure out, um, you know, how do, how do the different lengths in this drawing change with respect to time? Well, if you're looking for changes with respect to time, that's pretty much a derivative. Let's do that. And write dl dt, and I'm not going to, this is going to be pretty straightforward here. Oops, let me fix that. There. Plus 3, now remember, the, the, when you're taking derivatives, the coefficient goes out front. plus dh dt plus 2.5 dsp dt. Now that looks like we haven't really gotten anywhere. That's just, I just threw a bunch of d's in there. So what? Well, there's some, there's some useful information here. h, okay, it's right there. It doesn't change with time. I can pull on this rope all I want. And the distance from the pulley to the weight doesn't change. This is assumed to be fixed, so that means that's fixed. 
the derivative of, the, of that is zero. Okay, what else is zero? Well, those pulleys don't change size. I mean, they don't get bigger or smaller. And uh, so that is zero. And the rope itself, we're assuming implicitly here that the rope doesn't uh, change lengths. The length is the same. Now I know ropes stretch a little bit, but for our purposes here, we're assuming that the length uh, stays the same. So that goes to zero. Man, that's, that's a lot easier here. That, that just means that's all we've got left, and that's zero. So we really got is dSA dt plus 3 dSB dt equals zero. Simpler, yes. Okay, let's try this. Now, where's my hand? There we go. I've got to go all the way down there. Change in length with respect to time. That's a velocity, isn't it? Okay, now we're getting somewhere. All right, now I can relate the velocity of B to the velocity of A. So no problem. Now let's. I'm running out of room here. Let's uh, let's go over here. Okay, v a equals minus three v b. Okay, all I did was push that over to the other side. Now the last thing I've got is this minus sign here. Now implicitly, I've assumed that's my coordinate system. All right. So if I am pulling that way in the x direction, that V A is minus two. Okay. So if uh, v, the result is positive, that means the weight's going up. If the result's negative, that means the weight's going down. So let me uh, well, let's see here. Let me get rid of all this. Okay. Well, let's solve for V B. We already know what V A is. That was given at the beginning of the problem. So let's find V B. Yeah. Try this one more time. There we go. V B equals minus V A over three. Okay. V A is minus two. Minus because I'm going in the opposite direction of my po assumed positive direction. Okay. So that's going to be two meters per second over three. And if you want, you can call that point six six seven meters per second is VB. So there you go. We also know that since this is going up a lot slower than that is, I've got a mechanical advantage. Right. So there you go. This is how you do it. Uh, next video I'll do another uh, geometry just so you can see that this is a, a general way of solving problems. And it's really pretty straightforward.